Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and today just for fun we are going to look at uh, americium 241. Uh, we're going to use gamma spectroscopy and see what we can find. I've just recently gotten some better software on my computer. It's actually free software which is quite interesting. That allows me to uh, capture my uh, screen and show you a little bit better. So we'll see how that comes out. Here is americium 241 contained inside the Main, uh, uh, primary ionization chamber of a smoke alarm. Now, I know lots and lots of people pull the little button out of here so they can test it and whatnot. I don't need to. If I want an alpha source, I have an actual real polonium 210, one, uh, uh, one tenth of a microcarry source, so I don't really need an alpha source. And the gamma rays that are emitted go right through the little metal casing here. They don't do virtually anything to stop them, so I can see it, see them just fine with my gamma spectroscopic device. I did a little bit of math. This, the um, first off, I should say the half life of americium 241 is about what is it, 432 years, give or take. You might notice little scratch marks. My cat's always scratching me. Um, <clears throat> so 432 years is a particularly long, uh, long-lived alpha emitter to be as potent as this guy is right here. At least I think it is. And it typically turns into Neptunium-237 with a branching ratio of, well, I think it's nearly 1. In other words, the probability that it will do that is nearly 1 when it happens. There's a tiny, tiny chance of spontaneous fission, meaning that every now and then, for every gram of americium-241, there's approximately 1.2 spontaneous fissions per second. My cat is walking underneath the table. Good job, cat. So anyhow, that, that means that the americium-241 enters a metastable state and then breaks apart and becomes two other atoms. So I think that's kind of neat, actually. So we're going to see what kinds of things we can find here. Let me use my computer here. My little iPad thing here has a program on it that lets me look up um, stuff. I would show you the program, but the way the the rules work with um, hmm. the way, way the rules work with um, showing stuff on the computer, I can't because somebody else owns it and copyrights and such, which is annoying. I've calculated that a specific activity of 126.9 giga becquerels per gram means that that one gram has 3.4297 times 10 to the six microcuries of activity. I have a 0 0.9 microcurie sample here. That's what came out the smoke alarm. So I divide that by the number of microcuries and I end up with 2.624136. So 2.62 times 10 to the negative seventh grams. So approximately 0 0.262 micrograms. I have nearly a third of a microgram. That's not very much. And so that means that the possibility of spontaneous fissions per second is, well, very low. But given the entire time that I own this, it will probably undergo a couple. Okay, <clears throat> let's see if we can pick it up. As you know, it's an alpha emitter, but I can't detect the alpha because inside of this casing, I just can't get to it. So we should be able to pick up gamma from it, though. As you can see, well, let me pull this back for a second. My Geiger counter here, let me leave this over here. My Geiger counter is, well, we'll let it drop. Here's the, let's look at the, uh, the um, CDV 700. If I take the probe and place it over top, it doesn't matter if it has the gamma shield on or not, or a beta shield, I get almost nothing. Maybe a little. the gamma sensitivity of this probe is just not enough, and there's not very much gamma produced. Most Geiger counters have a sensitivity to gamma of less than less than 5%, usually 1, 2, maybe 3%, very common percentages. And now, with the inspector, I have 32 counts per minute right this moment. The inspector is a little bit better for americium 241. I think its efficiency is 5% off the top of my head. That means that whatever number is coming out of this, 
you can divide that by 0 0.05 and get the actual result. Let's see what that would come out to, just for giggles. And of course we're doing a spot check, which isn't really very accurate. And then we'll do some gamma spectroscopy. Wow. 132. 144. That's 12 squared right there. 142. 152. Let's say 140 minus background of about, let's say, 32 divided by 0 0.05, just kind of ballparking it here, would be 2,160 uh, 2, counts per minute. There's lots more gamma coming out of here than we're able to, de to detect. Okay, now let's take this in and do a little gamma spectroscopy and see what we find. It's amazing to see how much gamma comes out of your smoke alarm. Alrighty, folks. We are currently switching our mode to multi-channel scaling. What this means is that each one of these channels is going to wait for approximately, well, let's not go four times, four seconds, let's go with one second. Each one of these channels down here, which is 1,024 in number, will count as many gammas as it can with, with a rising dot here to signify how many it finds within one pe second period of time, and it will move across slowly as it does this. So we can get a good idea of how many um, of how many uh, accounts per second that we get. Let's cut the unit on, and then let's start accumulating, and we'll see what we get. Each one of these little channels down here, as you can see, is counting for one second to see how many gammas it gets. There they go, and it looks like we're getting hmm. Anywhere from maybe five to ten per second. These numbers are very small. I'd have to actually sit down and count them all to tell you for sure what the average is. But somewhere beneath sixteen per second. And let's see if I have a calculator. Here I have a calculator. Let us say that the average is boom 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 boom. They're all over the place. Let's say 10 counts per second. Times 60 seconds is 600 a minute. Give or take. So we'll just say that that's probably somewhere around the average. I don't have the top on my um, unit yet. If I put the actual top on with the lead, it, that, that number will drop dramatically. Now let's introduce the americium 241 sample. The americium 241 sample, which I have to get the air out of the little bag that it's in. I don't know how come it keeps filling with air. It's kind of weird. As I stick it in the unit, as you can see, there's an immediate change in the number of gammas that are detected. In fact, let me fit it all the way into the machine. And as you can see, the change in gammas is quite impressive. We all of a sudden went from an average of maybe a couple hundred counts per minute to, look at that, 420, 380, Let's call it 400, just to make it simple math. I'm not being too scientific today. 400 counts per second. Oops, times nothing. 400 counts per second minus our background, which is, let's say, 10. And then we're going to multiply that by 60 seconds. So we're looking at 23,000 counts per minute. All right. <clears throat> now let me put the top on the scintillator to guard against background. Ironically, it may actually reduce the rate just a little bit. There we go. Just a drop. And now, let's put all the lead in place. Huh. All the lead is now in place. Did you notice the readings? have statistically dropped just a little tiny bit. Look at that. They're now in the 340s and 350s where they were originally up in the 400s. No, give or take. Anyhow, let's stop. Clear this. Switch our mode to what we really want, which is pulse height, height analysis. This is where we will see those spikes that tell us. And you remember, each one of these channels right here, let me, let me 
turn the calibration on. Each one of these channels is equal, in this case, to one kilo electron volt apiece. I just happen to have it in that particular configuration. So we should be getting spikes down here in the, uh, uh, um, in the low, maybe what, 50 or less kilo electron volts? Let's see. 13.9 kilo electron volts. That's probably beneath my discriminator right here. Yeah, that's dead on to my discriminator. That's this little thing right here. That's the minimum that'll let me get away with. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Can I get rid of that? How about one? Boing. Okay. I might pick up the 13 kilotron volts. It's very hard to pick stuff up that's that low, though. That's the problem. The next energy I might pick up is 59.54. So let's put our mouse right there. That's about 60 if you round it up. So right around there, right around 60, I should get a, uh, a peak as well. 26.34 and 33, so 20s and 30 range. All right, isn't that annoying how the color scheme keeps changing in my Windows 7 box every couple seconds? It detects that I'm in the middle of something and screws me over. All right, well, let's accumulate and see what we get. Whew. Look at that, right on the dot. Well, close to right on the dot. I get two immediate peaks. Normally I get a big background peak that shoots up right around here somewhere, but I'm not seeing that today. And the reason is probably that the Americium 241's actual gammas are hitting around the same energy as the background peak, the background X-ray peak I usually get right here, and they're probably kind of like blurring or uh, blurring with each other, so it's probably hard to actually tell which one is which. Let's switch to another view. In this view, each one of these channels is equal to one kilo electron volt, but each one of these uh, Y uh, axes uh, uh, pieces right here are equal to a count, and they're not equal to a linear count, they're equal to a x squared type count, meaning that from here to here is 16 counts, from here to here is 16 to 256, from here to here is 256 to 4,000, from here is 4,000 to 64, 64 to a million, million to 16 million, so as you can see, each time that, uh, um, as you can see, the, the, the y scale here is kind of like curving up in an x squared sort of fashion. Let's switch to an actual one-to-one -one relationship, the linear view. As you can see, the linear view, um, these are proportional all the way up. I currently have them scaled a little bit, but they are proportionate all the way up. Alrighty, let me scale that down. Look at that guy. Each one of these little bits here is about 500. 500 counts. Let me click on the very top one right here. Oops, let me just use my arrow key. And as you can see, it at, at 62 kiloelectron volts, I'm getting tens of counts per second. See that? And 62 kiloelectron volts should be pretty close to what I'm looking for. I was looking for 59.54. My can, my calibration can be off by three or four kiloelectron volts in the low range, and it can be off by five or six in the high range. So that's pretty close. Look at these peaks go. Good grief. Let me scale them back down again. All right. Beautiful. That, friends, is americium 241. Switch back to the other one. Let me use the peak finder so I it can show you. Oops. There we go. Exactly what we're looking at. Now, this is what comes out of an average smoke alarm. My, uh, my smoke alarm is nine-tenths of a microcurie. Some are more, some are less. So it's one-third of a microgram of Amory C241. Most people probably wouldn't even realize that there was this much gamma coming from your smoke alarm. The probability of dying in a fire but when not having a smoke alarm is significantly higher than the probability of getting cancer from a smoke alarm. In fact, um, I've never actually heard of a proven case from a smoke alarm of cancer, although I'm sure all the people on YouTube will go tearing out as fast as they can and look up statistics and documents and research to prove me wrong, as is always done. But realistically speaking, some people probably have gotten cancer from smoke alarms. Probably. I don't know if that can be proven or not. It's so difficult to pin down uh, the cause of cancers. but. Think of how many people die in a fire every year from either having a no smoke alarm or a non-working, a non-functional smoke alarm. And the risk is worth it. It's kind of like getting an x-ray, for example. If you 
have something wrong inside of you and you have an x-ray, your chance of cancer increases ever so slightly from the x-ray, but your chance of dying from whatever it is that's inside of you might be technically higher if you don't have the x-ray. So it's a cause, a, a cost-benefit analysis, if you like. It's kind of obvious. All right. So there you can see. Americium-241 almost assuredly all the way across. Okay. Well, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and hopefully you found this as fun as I did. I always find gamma spectrography fun. Some people do not, and those people should not watch the video because they will be bored. Bye-bye.